good to have the Kempton Church coming out this morning. Oh, well, I want you to go to home. Worship just like you there in your own home, church. Uh, I was sitting here and looked back over the crowd and I thought, my goodness, this is a real blessing for me. I got both churches here today. And, uh, and of all times, I got another preacher. But it's good to be here. It really is. I appreciate all you that's come out. There's a lot of people that can't get out. I said one ago we'd had the lowest number we ever had this morning. Had been for the Kempton Church. Praise the Lord for them. Amen. Yeah. Uh, we're going to pray over our service for this. Brother Jordan's going to bring the message this morning, and uh, we're going to have our song service. We've got some specials lined up, but we're going to pray. Whatever we do, we need it saturated in the Holy Spirit. We really need the Holy Spirit to lead God and brethren this morning. We taught that in Sunday school this morning. My student, one of them, Kylie, asked me some time ago to teach on the Holy Spirit. We taught the first lesson this morning, and we got others. I said, I'm going to have to teach about five or six, seven, eight lessons on this to get all of this in. So uh, we talked the first one this morning. And we talked about the Holy Spirit being in our service this morning, the Holy Spirit being in us, and the Holy Spirit is a person, and things like that. Uh, but we're going to pray right now. We're going to ask God into our service. If you have a need this morning, I want you to know that we serve a God that can supply that need. I believe that with all my heart. And uh, you just ask him, and he'll do it. I believe that. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your comfort, your guidance. Yes. Lord, your teachings. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this gathering this morning. And each individual, Lord, uh, that's sitting here, Lord, there's no mistake, there's a purpose for it, Lord. Each one of us, Lord, has something to do. Father, I pray, God, that you'll just anoint this service, Lord. Jeffrey, Lord, bless him. Anoint him, Father, Lord, as he leads us in songs, Lord. And, Father, our special singers this morning, just anoint them, Father, Lord, and let them feel free, Father, to worship you, Lord, as the dictates of their own heart, Father. Father, I pray, God, Lord, this morning, that they be a lost one here, <clears throat> that you'll touch them and bring conviction to them and yes. give them the wisdom, Lord, to bow an altar somewhere, Lord repent of their sins and accept you as their personal Savior. Father, they be those here that's been discouraged and went through problems, Lord, and, and drained, Lord. It just needs a refreshing of your sweet Holy Spirit, Lord. Let us all speak. Let them speak up, Lord, and ask you because you said, Lord, that if it just ask, you would give it. And I believe that with all my heart. Lord. Father, take our service. Lead God to rest every moment of it, Father. Everyone that speaks, sings, or whatever, just Send the anointing and anoint it, Father Lord. And we'll give you praise and thanks because it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 Yeah. So. Hot man. Uh, turn to Psalm with page 653. I feel like traveling on. My head Which 
good thing on your day. Like you're feeling better. Uh, Scarlett, you want to do one? All right. Nobody's going to look over there. Fire and blood. Or... Yeah. I'm supposed to have that one. Page 176. Power and blood. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in
thank you, Lord. Say amazing grace. Yes,
be here this morning. Uh, but sit to thinking and it's that's dangerous sometimes. When I'm thinking. But I do sit and think sometimes. I was thinking about all the outages we had here lately. Uh, especially up in uh, Putnam County. And y'all had some outages up there. And I thought, when the pyre's out. That's, I, I thank the Lord you made that, that little thought there. When the power's out. There's a lot of things that it's really not safe when the power's out, is it? That's true. Amen. In light of the trip of Paul. Right. Yep. And I thought about that, and I'm not preaching this morning, yeah. but you know, it's hard for a preacher yeah. to not say nothing, you know. <laughs> and the uh, Lord gave me that thought. But uh, it, when the power's out, well, you can't even read the instructions. Because <laughs> you can't see if it's dark. <laughs> and definitely, we don't need to be stumbling and falling. Yeah. And definitely, we need to be able to read the instructions Amen. Yeah. in order to get the power back on. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's easy to stumble and fall when the power's out. <coughs> when the power goes out, we get fearful. And God did not give us a spirit of fear. That's what He said. Yeah, yeah. it's true. And we don't need to be scared. Of what's going to happen, this is going to happen, and what's coming our way. We just need to put our faith and trust yeah. in the one who can keep the power of it. Amen. That's the truth. <laughs> Amen. Jesus said, You are the light of the world. Why? So when the power goes out, if you're the one of uh, uh, his children, you don't have to worry about it. Because you'll have light within Amen. that'll lead you. Yeah. Wow. When the power goes out and it's dark, it seems like it's darker than ever before, no? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's awful. When the power goes out, when it's cool, you'll get cold. We don't need to be cold in God's house. Spiritually speaking. Yeah. We need the power on. And when the power's on, everything else is going to be on. That's yeah. true. Yeah. And ready. Yeah. It's good to be here today. That's all I've got to say. Lord, just put it on my heart sitting over there. We, it's a great privilege, really. I've not heard, Jordan, I don't think I've heard you preach since you moved away. I heard you, you know, do a little, what all the preachers did here. And it's an honor to have Jordan come and preach this morning. It's an honor to have Ryan and Tracy sing for us this morning. And um, it's an honor to have Scarlett go to sing for us. And it's a real honor to have Opie and Anchor. <laughs> They're going to Paul's house. Amen. <laughs> so I'll have a good time over there to see. Amen. Uh, and we're going to do this a little different because I know that y'all have got a song. And Scarlett, you've got a song. And George is going to play for you. So uh, I usually... Ask everybody to honor God's man as he comes to preach. I want you to do that today, but you just honor. They're just all family here going to sing and preach. Will you give them honor right now? Amen. Amen. And Jordan, when they get through, you just take it like it's yours. Amen? Because right. it is God's man. Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
do it again. So when Jordan talked to me about singing today, I originally said I didn't want to because um, I feel really unworthy to sing. And um, we talked about the fact that it's not about me at all or what I'm worthy of. Also, I, I get really nervous to sing, I think, because it's like the attention is on me, but it's not. It's on the Lord, so please just focus on the Lord and the words and worship Him with me if you want to. Amen. <coughs>
Thank you, Lord. So under the name of God, we do so under the, the name of 
Christians and growing and, and seeking the Lord, then I believe that's the thing we need to do. Um, I don't think we need to come uh, interact as we are, as we would in a social club, or even though we can be social, I don't think we should come and, and look for entertainment, even though there are things that happen that are entertaining. The main point for us to turn to God's Word is to hear it. And not only hear it, but to apply it to our lives, yeah. <coughs> to put it in our hearts and allow it to produce fruit. Yeah. So this morning, I want to take just a moment. I want to ask you to bow your heads and pray, and pray for yourselves. Yeah. Pray that the Lord prepares your heart. Because this is a two-way section here. There's the word being delivered, but there's also the word being received. And a good delivery can be messed up by a bad reception, and vice versa. So, let's take a moment and pray, and I'll close that, and we'll get into the passage this morning. Father, thank you for this time. For yours is the power and the glory in the kingdom forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to start, we're going to be in Matthew 13, like I said, and we're going to be in verse 44. I'm going to be challenging you a little bit on something this morning. Um, just kind of challenging what we've always thought about this passage. And uh, But we'll get there in just a second. I'm going to start with a story. It was probably, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, uh, my family, we rented a cabin up in the mountains, and we went up there, me and Scarlett and Mom and Dad, Aaron and Brooklyn, my, my sister and brother-in-law, and this was probably 1 B.C. or 2 B.C., and what I mean by that is one or two years before children, right? And uh, we went up there, and we had this big cabin, and it was, it was huge. We were having a good time, but we decided that what we were going to do we were going to turn out all the lights in this cabin, and we were going to play hide and seek in the dark with just flashlights, um, which was a lot of fun. Everybody did it. And so I, I found this spot on top of the refrigerator where I climbed up, and I was able to sit to stand on top of this refrigerator. And I was able to watch everybody as they went back and forth. They, they couldn't find me. I was up there for, I don't know, ever. Anyway, I, was, I won, basically. But that's not unusual that happens. <laughs> but I was standing up there. I was able to watch everybody moving back and forth. And, and heard them talking. They go, where's Jordan? Where's Jordan? We can't find it. And the reality of it was I was right there. They were literally right below me. If, if they could have just looked up, I would have been able to see me easily. But because I was in the dark, and because their viewpoint was so parallel, it was so centered on in the middle and not up, they didn't see me. Oftentimes, I've felt like this has been my testimony in my Christian life. That I've been trying to find God. Looking all throughout this life. In every corner. Every day. Just searching and searching and searching. And to be honest with you, if I can. It feels like I just haven't found it. I'm always left wanting more. I'm always left empty. And I came to the conclusion over very recently. One thing, you yeah, probably haven't heard me preach in a while. One thing is I'm very honest and real and genuine. Because I view preaching as God preparing me through my struggles, through my trials, through the things I'm going through, through the things he puts on me. And then I get to deliver that. Probably the last four months where I haven't been pastoring, haven't been preaching, um, this is the first time I've preached since I resigned my church in California. Past four months, the Lord has taught me something that has changed my faith. Something that I never realized. And it, and it may not be as earth-shattering, ground-shaking to you as it is to me. 
But the thing I've realized is that God's not hiding from me. It's actually the other way around. It's actually I'm hiding from him. That he is seeking after me. That his desire is for me to know him, to see him. And I said I was going to challenge you a little bit on this passage in Matthew 13. And that's my premise for this sermon. And that's the thing that I hope to prove to you this morning. Is that one, God is seeking after you. And then two, what, why does that matter? What it means for us. If you look at this passage in Matthew 13, 44, it's a familiar passage. We've heard it. Jesus is giving these, these uh, kingdom passages. And he says, again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in a field, to which a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth, and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth the field. And we'll just read the next one to you. And again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant man, seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and bought it. Now I've always heard these passages preached, and I've always heard them taught, and I've always thought about them myself, that the one who goes and sells everything to possess the great treasure is me. Right? That's what I've always heard. That's how I've always heard them taught. That's how I've always thought about them. But I was directed back to this chapter, and I was reading through it, and one thing stuck out to me in the context of this chapter. This is not the only two kingdom parables here, right? Jesus delivers several kingdom parables here, starting with the sower. Yeah. And he's starting with the sower who goes out and tosses the seed, and some grows, some doesn't grow. We're very familiar with that. Then he moves into the parable of the man who sows wheat. And as he sows his wheat, the enemy comes and sows tares. And the ruler says, don't rip up the tares lest you rip out the wheat. Yeah. Then he moves on to the man who sows the mustard seed, the least of all the seeds, that when it grows, it is big enough to house all of the birds in it. And then he talks about the leaven that the woman has. But then he explains those parables. And he tells the disciples, he says, listen, the son of man is he who sows. Right? Basically what he's saying is, I am the main point in each of these parables. I'm the main theme in each of these parables. I am the one who is acting in these parables. Not the one being acted upon. It's me who's doing these things. But for some reason, when we get to these next two, and just these next two, because if we go on to the last one, which is the parable of the net being cast out and all of the fish being gathered in to, to represent all the nations will be coming together in the kingdom. We still put Jesus as the main point of that. Amen. But in these two, we switch it and we make ourselves the main actor. Amen. Why do we do that? I believe that the man who saw the treasure and found it to be valuable and gave up everything to possess it was Jesus. Amen. That he looked upon us and he saw us as valuable. He saw us as something that he desired because of who he created us to be, by the way. And he gave up everything Amen. so that he could come and possess us. Amen. Now listen, isn't that life-changing to understand? Amen. It should be. It should be something that is life-changing right. to realize that Christ is seeking after us. Amen. That Christ has come for us. And by the way, we can turn there and read it. We, I think you all know it. Philippians 2 is just further proof of this to me. Where it talks about Jesus being in the form of God. Counted equality with God as something to not be grasped. But rather he emptied himself. Right. Taking on the form of a servant. In obedience. Even obedience to death on the cross. Right? Amen. He gave up everything. Yeah. When we talk about the sacrifice of Jesus. We, we often go to the cross. But I've often said... I think the most impressive sacrifice is that he gave up equality with the Father yeah. to take on the form of a servant, yeah. to step in the flesh so that he could go and die. What a sacrifice that was. How it should change us to know that we have made this thing way more complicated than it ever had to be. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And I want to talk about three ways that this, three people that this affects, how it affects us. The first is the sinner. 
And I don't know if there's any here, and I wouldn't ask you to raise your hand if you were here, but if you don't know the Lord, right, you've never accepted him, this is good news for you. Amen. And it's good news for you because you're living and you're breathing and you're sitting here. Right. Therefore, I believe that Jesus is actively seeking after him. Amen. Amen. If you look, I saw a quote yesterday, and it was, uh, we often miss the ordinary in search of the extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's so silly. Because if you really think about it, the ordinary is extraordinary. Amen. I was sitting in the living room this morning, and Anchor was watching a, a TV show about uh, animals, and it was about beavers. And I say Anchor was watching it, but he wasn't in there. So I was watching a show about beavers. <laughs> And I'm sitting there, and there, there's somebody's breaking down this beaver. Everything that this beaver has in order to exist in the habitat that it exists in. Right? A beaver has a flap in the back of its throat that it can close off so that it can go underwater and chew on trees without inhaling a bunch of water and drowning to death. Come on now, that's impressive. Yeah. It's impressive. Listen, you never understand, I don't think, fully understand the miracle of life until you've had a child, until you've been around them. The psalmist says, right, that it's the suckling of the babe that brings down all the mighty men of this world. Because yeah. we can't explain it. How is it that this little, wrinkly, ugly salamander thing immediately knows how to eat and how to live and how to breathe? It's a miracle. It's a miracle that there's one muscle in the center of your body that is able to supply oxygen, nutrients, and everything you need for life to the rest of your body. It's a miracle that I think to move this hand and it moves, and I think to move this hand and it moves, that I think to move my feet and they move. This is a miracle. Amen. Who was able to stand and look at life and say, man, life is just plain boring. It's just ordinary. Even if you've had a hard life, and I know some of you have, but even if you had a hard life, the fact that Christ has brought you to this point Amen. shows that he is seeking after you. Amen. The fact that you can sit and you realize that you are the only animal in creation, and I use that term tongue in cheek, you're the only animal in creation that can sit and think about your own ex existence. Right. The grizzly bear is not sitting cross-legged somewhere under a honey suckle and going, why am I a bear? What is my purpose? His purpose is to eat honey and fish and berries and sleep for six months. Sounds a lot like some of us, right? <laughs> the snake doesn't go, why am I a snake? What is my purpose? The trees don't sit around and contemplate their own existence, but you can. Amen. And by the way, you probably have and you should, because you're faced with these questions in your life that you don't know the answer to if you're lost. Right. Why am I here? What is my purpose? What happens when we die? These are things that keep flooding you. They keep coming and coming and coming, and you're searching for the answers. You wouldn't believe how many people go through Nine, ten, a dozen existential crises on a daily basis. Amen. They're looking for answers. Everybody feels the guilt of being a human. So we're trying to save the world with climate change. Everybody feels guilty. We've got to do something. Let's throw our money in this. Let's throw our time in this. That's why lost people can be uh, philanthropic. It's because they feel the guilt. They feel the desire to help. Amen. They know they need to. Yeah. And they're trying to cover that. What are they trying to do? They're trying to hide from the God who's telling them Amen. that they're guilty. That's right. And that they need to turn. That they need to confess that they're sinners. They're hiding behind man-made things. By the way, this is what Adam and Eve did. Yeah. They sinned. They went. They, they made clothes for themselves out of bushes. And they hid. Yeah. Notice it wasn't God who disappeared and hid from them. Right. God did what? He came looking for them. Yeah. 
And he said, Adam, Eve, where are you? What have you done? Why are you hiding from me? Well, we hid from you because we're naked. Well, who told you you were naked? Well, we ate the tree, right? Yeah. We ate the tree. And they tried to hide themselves with man-made apparatuses. Man-made clothes. Now, I want to take just a moment, a little tangent here. They say you get one rabbit trail in every sermon, and this will be mine. <laughs> Just because you're sitting here in this church house does not mean that you're in the clear of not hiding yourself behind man. Amen. That's true. Put a pin in that. We'll come back to that later, okay? Put a pin in that. But they hide behind their charity. They hide behind their carry. They hide behind those things. The greatest mistake we as a church can make, I believe this, is to think that everybody who's not a Christian is the worst person ever. Because let me tell you something, I've met a lot of people who aren't Christian. And they act a whole lot more like Christians than Christians do sometimes. They're kind, they're generous. What they're trying to do is figure out a way to find a purpose and to hide from the Lord who created them. Yeah. Jesus wants to save them. It's the Lord's desire that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Do you believe that? Amen. You believe it? Amen. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to ask you again. It's the Lord's desire that none should perish, but all come to repentance. Do you believe that? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I believe it. I believe it. All right, here we go. Turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus wants to save the liar. Jesus wants to save the liar. Turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus wants to save the murderer. Turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus wants to save the homosexual. Jesus wants to save the homosexual. Jesus wants to save the person struggling with gender identity. Jesus wants to save the transgender and the, and the pervert. He wants to save them. He doesn't desire for them to perish, and he's seeking after them. And they're hiding from him. Don't get me wrong. They're not doing right. Paul says in all creation we can see the invisible attributes of God, which we suppress. Amen. You know what it means to suppress something? It means to hold it down. Yeah. You push it down. We suppress it by unrighteousness. Amen. So we look at creation and we go, I have a bigger purpose. I'm going to go sin until I find it. That's what the lost person says. But friends, Jesus is seeking after them. Yeah. He wants to save them. Amen. He's right there. He's the one that's revealing they have a bigger purpose. Right. Second person I want to talk to is the saint. The saint. What does this mean for you? Well, it means that the Lord is with you. Amen. This idea, I've had this, this thought in my head for a while now. This idea of going from there to here is a big change. And what I mean by that is taking God and not putting him out there somewhere. Not putting him somewhere where I'm trying to work up and, and climb up and scratch my way to him. But rather putting him right here. Yeah. Where he is, by the way. Psalmist says, where can I go, Lord, to escape from you? I go to the to the heights of heaven, you're there. I go to the gates of Sheol, you're there. I go to the deepest, darkest part of the ocean, Lord, you are there. Where can I go to get away? Yeah, amen. We often invoke God to show up. Come here, Lord, do this for me. The Lord's already there, friend. Amen. amen. He's right there with you. The thing that we need to learn to do is open our eyes to Him. Amen. See him for who he is. Yeah. By the way, is that not the definition of faith? Yeah. Is faith not evidence of things hoped for? I'm sorry, I always get it backwards. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yeah. That we as Christians can look and see the Lord working. Right. That we can open our eyes and we can see that the Lord is here right now. And in Hanford, where we live, we lived probably 30, 40 minutes away from some, some mountains. And we live in the valley. 
longest valley in North America, actually, San Joaquin Valley. And we live about 30, 40 minutes away from these mountains, and they're beautiful, huge mountains. I mean, we lived in Colorado, and they were big mountains. These mountains were bigger than those mountains, right? Bigger than the Rockies, the Sierra Pacific. And we could see them a couple of days out of the year. A couple of days out of the year, we could see them. After a rain, or after it, it, the wind would come through and it would blow some of that smog off the air, we could see them. But the rest of the year, we just had to trust they were there. The rest of the year, we, we didn't see them. It just looked like flat forever. We often, as Christians, live in this world where we let the smog, we let the, the nasty stuff hide our God from us. He's going to be there. And just like I knew, if I got in my car and I drove east far enough, I was going to hit mountains sometime. Same is true with the Lord. If I just hold on long enough, Amen. I'll be able to see his hand. Yeah. Christian, can you honestly look back over your life and say the Lord has not played a part in my life? I wish we had the time. We don't. I could tell you story after story after story after story. From how I met Scarlett to how I was into preaching to how we ended up wherever we ended up where the Lord was just working. So what does this mean? Can I tell you what it means? You're not going to like this part. Quit complaining. Amen. Just shut up. Yeah. Is the Lord in control or not? He is. Amen. I mean, that's a simple question. Yeah. Is he or isn't he? And if he is, then quit acting like he's not. Amen. Amen. Sitting here and we cower and we fear and, and, and da 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 da. We got along about how terrible things are. My goodness, you got up this morning and used a bathroom inside your house. It's not that bad for you. Amen. Life's pretty good. Even in our hardest situations, life's pretty good. And until you learn to see God, even in the hard things, all you're going to do is be a complainer. Amen. I wonder so many times, and this is, this is me wondering on a, on a grand scale, why are our churches empty? Because we're not propping up Jesus Amen. and saying, hey, Jesus is in control. He's king. Amen. We're propping up problems. Yeah. Amen. We're propping up complaints. Yeah. We're propping up issues. Saying this is the main thing. No, Jesus is the main thing. Amen. He said, I have loved the world. I've come and given myself for it. And one day, he said, I will be raised up as the snake in the wilderness. And all who look to me will be drawn to me. If God is the one drawing people, and Jesus is the one drawing people, and people aren't being drawn, then what's the issue? Does God fail? Is he unable to keep his promises? Then why don't we act like it? The Lord is here. He just wants to be shown. And that's our job, is to reveal him. Not hide it, not weaken it, not cheapen it. Right. But to reveal it. Amen. The third person I want to speak to is myself, the struggler, right? I did the, all the S's because I knew, you know, people like that, all the S's. You can remember it, right? Talk to the sinner and the saint. And I want to talk to the struggler, which is me. I don't know why we, I want to be like we. I say we because I like to generalize. But I'll speak to myself here. I don't know why I want to be like Naaman. Where I go, Lord, what do I have to do? What do you need from me? How is it that I can know you? How is it that I can have assurance in the, in the power of the resurrection? How is it that I can do these things? And the Lord says, open your eyes, accept me. Yeah. Right? Don't do what Adam and Eve did. Don't come out with these brushes and say, but Lord, I kept every letter in the Freeville Baptist Church covenant. Here it is. Lord, I kept every letter 
in the whatever. <coughs> you know, we, we oftentimes criticize the Catholic Church and the Protestants for having idols. They have their sacraments and they have their idols, they have their things that they, they pray to, they have their, their rituals that they do. And we look at them and go, that's idolatry. As if we're much better. I searched every quarter, turned over every rock, and what did I come away with? An empty feeling. Feeling of unsatisfaction. Feeling of, where are you, Lord? I had somebody ask me when I was leaving the church and they said, have you had a lot of, you know, spiritual highs in your life where you're on, you're on the hill with the Lord? I said, no, it's been quite the opposite with me. I've been in the valley a lot with the Lord. I've been in the everyday praying and studying and reading and looking and just trying to figure it out. Yeah. Because I'm there. Where the Lord says, hey, this is what you need to do. And I said, no, 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 no. It's got to be a lot more complicated than that. Until I came to the realization that God had already done all the heavy lifting. Yeah. Amen. That he'd already done all the hard work. Amen. Now, don't, don't think that I'm cheapening the cost of discipleship. We're going to get right. to that in just a second. But do you realize... There's nothing more you can be do. There's nothing more you can do to be saved. There's nothing more. Jesus already did it. And to think that you can add to that is to take away from what he already has done. Do we not understand that? We, 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 somebody would bring us a recipe, you know, and we eat it and we go, oh, that's the best chili. I bet I can do better. Well, then it's not the best chili. That's right. If you can do better, it's not the best. And if what Christ has done is the only thing that brings salvation, there's nothing more we can do. The only option we have is to accept it. That's right. To say, yes, Lord. I agree with you. That's what confession is, by the way. If you look at it in the Greek, it means to be in agreement with it. So when John says in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What we have to do is not be like Adam and Eve, where we come out with branches tied around us to cover our nakedness. What we need to do is come out fully exposed and say, Lord, this is who I am, and there's nothing I can do about it, but you can. Until you're willing to admit your faults, you'll never be able to receive God's grace. Amen. Yeah. And until you are willing to admit that your effort's not enough, you'll never be able to rely on Christ's effort. Amen. And by the way, if you're not relying on Christ's effort, and you're not receiving Christ's gift, and you're not relying on His power, no wonder we're miserable. No wonder we can't come in here and sing Amen. about the glory of God. Amen. No wonder we can't lift our hands and praise. No wonder we can't tell our neighbor about Christ, because we're still trying to figure it out. And for us, Say, Lord, you're right. It's that easy. Amen. Now, I said I wouldn't cheapen the cost of discipleship, but I think the cost of discipleship is an effect. That when Christ has affected us so, we're willing to forsake everything. Amen. What came first? Peter leaving his family and his home and dying on a cross upside down or the call yeah. the call came first Amen. the first thing that happened was Jesus coming to Peter and saying come follow me Amen. that's the truth <laughs> not everything else don't reverse it don't get the cart ahead of the horse we often do this where Jesus says if you love me you'll keep my commandments what we translate that to is keeping your commandments is loving you no. Bless you, Lord. Loving you leads 
to be keeping in your family. It's not the other way around. But when we get the cart ahead of the horse, we come out with human branches on. We come out covering ourselves with clothes that we've made and said, Lord, I'm going to make it because I'm good at work. Lord, I'm going to make it because I've put in the work. Lord, I'm going to do it because I'm strong enough, because I would help from this and this. And this. No, friend, the only chance you have is if you've accepted Christ. Amen. And it's as easy as a green one. One thing I've come to realize is that if I've looked at every area, every corner of the box, and I can't find what I'm looking for, then the thing I'm looking for must not be in the box. Right? It's common sense. So, friends, this morning, if everything you've tried is looking to a dead end, <coughs> If you've searched every corner of the box and you've not found the peace that passes understanding that comes from knowing the Lord, then you're probably not in the box. And by the way, he wouldn't have fit in there if you tried to put it in there. The fact of the matter is, friends, it's not about how well you seek after him. It's not about how well you can clothe yourself. The gospel, the story of life, from creation till recreation, is that God loved you. I don't know why. But God loved you. And he was willing to sacrifice everything. Yeah. Being a member of the kingdom of heaven is not about you possessing God. No. It's about God possessing you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. It's about surrendering. How do we do that? I'm done after this, by the way. How do we do that? Well, friends, it doesn't start. You may get in trouble for this. It's okay. I'll let Scarlett handle that. It doesn't start with a parade of our righteousness. It doesn't start with each of us coming in here and sitting in what we call a church building and acting like we're perfect. You know what that is? That's human clothes. If you can't stand up, I'm going to say this boldly because I mean it. If you can't stand up in front of your church and say, church, this is where I struggle. This is what I struggle with. I want to know the Lord, but I can't seem to get past this. I can't seem to get over this. And they don't gather around you and help you. Then you're not going to a church. Amen. You're going to a social club. Amen. Where everybody has to meet the guidelines. Right. right? Everybody has to, you know, if you go to a golf club, there's certain attire. Uh, Restrictions you have to meet, certain things you have to do. That's why we've turned our churches this way. Hear about somebody getting divorced, what's the first thing to do? I can't believe they did that. They just done everything that the script you don't know what's in there, what they're struggling with. That's right. Why don't you go pray for them? Yeah. Why don't you go Amen. love them? Why don't you go <laughs> ask them, hey, what can I do? I've sat in counsel with many, many married couples looking for a divorce. I can tell you, talk about being honest, I'll be honest with you. We had a guy come into our church when I was when I was a new pastor. And when you step into the role and you're new and there's people there previously, you kind of tell the line for a little bit until you figure out what's going on, right? We had this guy come into our church and he was a saved gang member. He was a hitman for the game. And he's, you know, stories of him really messing some people up and even taking some lives. And gave his life to the Lord. He's married to this woman. But he's struggling because there's this sense that he feels like she's cheating on him. Like she's stepping out on him. And it's bothering him, bothering him, bothering him. 
And we're counseling them and say, brother, you got to trust her. you got to trust her. you got to do this and this and this. So we kept pushing and pushing. You know, don't, don't seek divorce. Don't do this. Turns out she, a couple of weeks up and moved to San Diego with the guy she was cheating on him with. Where did he go? Think he came back to church? He went right back to the game. Because there, they didn't judge him for getting a divorce. There, they had a, a bit of compassion and understanding for someone who was, who was going through the thing he was going through. All he found in us was pushing our agenda and toe line. Which, by the way, I don't think it's wrong to counsel somebody to stay in. My point is, if we miss the person for the principle, then we miss the principle. Amen. Amen. I think about him. His name was, was Alvin. And I think about him often. I pray for him often. Because I feel responsible. I could have embraced him and wrapped my arms around him. But no, I had to toe the line. Friends, if we're going to be a church, it's not going to be with masks on. It's not going to be hiding in the thing. It's going to be God calling us and us stepping out fully naked. And by the way, I don't know why we can't do that. Me and you, we're the only group of people, and I'm talking in a general sense as Christians, we're the only group of people that are willing to admit that it's not our effort that does anything. We're the only group of people that's willing to admit we can't do it on our own. So why do we continue to act like we can't? You will never pull the board. Your friends, his opinion is the only one that matters. Amen. It's time to be real. It's time for this to mean something. It's time for us to embrace those that the Lord desires to save, which we said he desires to save all. Amen. We don't cheapen the gospel. We don't cheapen his word. But rather we fulfill it, just as Christ did. And may we do it in the strength. Brother Frank, that's all I got. Appreciate the message. congregation can't save you. We can forgive you, but not the type of forgiving you need. Because you've not sinned against us. You've sinned against him. True. I don't know what your situation is, but I know what the answer is. Amen. And it's not, I don't have an answer, but he does. And if you'll come to him boldly to the throne of grace this morning, he'll take care of whatever it is. Amen. As you all stand, we play something. Just a moment of time, you bow your head, and if you wish to, you talk to him. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, speak to him. You feel a need, and you want others to pray with you, just want them to them an altar. There'll be people pray with you.
said it would not be and that it would be if it wasn't. But how great it would be if everybody's but your soul. Nothing between you and the Lord. Moments of time. Appreciate your message, Jordan. If you appreciate it, like I said, be sure to tell you. Appreciate Kemple coming out and visiting with us today. They couldn't have church on the slope out there on the hill. We didn't help you a whole lot, but at least you didn't have to walk up here. But we appreciate y'all coming. And I appreciate all the singing that was done here that was been sang today. The song's been sang. I don't know how to say that. I got tongue tied there. But anyway, appreciate you all. Anybody got anything to say before we dismiss this morning? All hearts clear. I know what Donnie Dixon's going to come and do. I know what he's going to do. I didn't mean to call this the idea. I didn't I didn't call call you don't, Brian don't have no way. I know who he's going to do. He's going to tell me that we owe them one. I know him. I know him. I put up his Amen. Praise the Lord. Good to be here. Go ahead, brother. Keep the courage family in their prayers. Riley, when she was almost 99, <laughs> it's still a tough, tough loss on them. Yes. Pray for our family. Amen. Pray he lives on by, so. Yeah, amen. It's good to have Sister Carmine's brother's wife inside today. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Yeah. He's been through some surgery, and then, and then this coronavirus and everything that's been going on. But God's good, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, God's good. He's in control. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else got anything you want to say? Brian, you dismiss us. Father, we thank you for the day that you've given us. We thank you, Father, for your spirit that's amongst us, Father. We thank you, Father, for the message that was preached, Father. We pray, Lord, that we would take the words, Lord, that was said, the scriptures that were read, Father. We would apply it to our lives and our hearts. and It would allow us to be better people, better Christians, Father, better servants for you. We ask you to keep us safe as we leave here this afternoon. This, this morning, and Lord, uh, watch over us throughout the week, and Lord, put somebody in our path, Father, that we may witness to and be alive to the world. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Just enjoy it.